for that again. Perfect timing. <laughs> Okay, it's 7 o'clock, and I would like to welcome those that are with us here tonight uh, in the audience uh, for our study session and also those at home that are watching. We'd like to begin our meeting uh, by acknowledging that the land on which we gathered is the territory of the Ottawa and Chippewa peoples who have stewarded this land throughout the eight generations. Thank you for your strength and resilience in protecting this land and inspiring us to uphold our responsibility to do the same. As we interact with each other tonight, may we do so with respect, dignity, patience, and charity. It is a study session. There will be no decisions made tonight. We only have one topic, and it's uh, the moving downtown forward. As you can see on our screens, it's got two major topics uh, as an update and uh, next steps that's going to be presented to us uh, by the Traverse City Downtown Development Authority. So, Kenny, I'll turn it over to you or... I know what. Let's do the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. <laughs> and then we'll do the roll call. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My main wing is under God. I'm here. <laughs> okay, roll call, please. Yes, good evening, Commissioner Werner. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Shamro. Here. Commissioner Wilson. Commissioner Stanley. Here. Commissioner Treadwell. Here. Commissioner Cobert. Here. And Mayor Lewis. Here. Okay, announcements from the interim city manager, please. Uh, no announcements today, Honorable Mayor. Thank you. Announcements from the city clerk. Uh, yes, just some meetings to announce for this week, the week of April 24th. On Tuesday, April 25th, the Act 345 Retirement System, System Board will meet. That'll be at noon in the committee room on the second floor of the Governmental Center. The Mobility Action Plan Leadership Team will meet on Wednesday, April 26th. That's at 4 p.m. in the committee room on the second floor of the Governmental Center. Historic Districts Commission is meeting on Thursday, April 27th at noon in the second floor committee room of the Governmental Center. And finally, with respect to meetings to announce the Housing Commission's meeting this Friday, April 28th at 9 a.m. in the Housing at the Housing Commission's uh, offices. Uh, as always, information regarding those meetings and their agendas is available on the city's website. We are recruiting for a number of volunteer board and committee seats, uh, including those on the Local Officers Compensation Commission, the Election Commission, the Human Rights Commission. Anyone interested in serving is encouraged to contact the city clerk's office. And then just uh, one community update, and that is that with respect to the master plan, the city is hosting a design workshop on April 26th from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. That's at the Hickory Hills Lodge, and it'll inform the design and transformation of three key locations in the city. They include Munson Avenue between uh, the college and the city limits, 14th Street and Garfield Avenue, and then finally intersection rather of Garfield Avenue and 8th Street. So those three primary areas. And more information on times and locations regarding uh, these sessions can be found at tcmasterplan.org. And lastly, I just want to remind everyone sitting up here to please speak into the microphone so folks here in the audience and watching elsewhere can hear you. That's all that I've got. Okay, thank you. Now we can go what's on our study session. I don't think I need to reintroduce that. No. So, Penny, I'll no. turn that over to you. Certainly. Uh, we have several representatives here today from the um, Downtown Development Authority, and they will be uh, updating the City Commission on the uh, several projects, the Lower Boardman, Ottaway, Downtown Riverwalk, and the West End Parking Structure, and outlining next steps in each of those projects. So we can start with, um, I believe, Jean Durenzi is here. Yes. Good evening, City Commissioners. Um, thank you for your time. In your packet is both the memo and this presentation. We're not going to go word for word. On this presentation, we want to make sure that um, you have the ability to look at the elements that's in the RFP as well as the timeline and the touch points of when this process will be coming back in front of you. These are two major public infrastructure projects that will be owned by the City of Traverse City. The DDA will be the financing component to be able to implement the projects themselves. 
With me um, with, for this presentation is uh, city uh, in planner, Sean Winter, and city engineer, Tim Warner. Uh, as nope. well, not Tim Warner. Tim Lodge. City engineer, Tim Lodge. And uh, we have the COO of the DDA, Carrie Burkholder, and our transportation and mobility director, Nicole Van Ness. So with that, uh, I will start with the Lower Boardman Ottaway project. And in your packet, you have the, uh, the, the process and the history. It's really important to start with that history and how we got here with the Lower Boardman Ottaway. It really had a lot of collaboration between the DDA, the City Commission, City Planning Commission, City Parks Commission, and had representatives of those um, boards, as well as representatives of the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians. We had representative of the neighborhoods, the Watershed Council, and FLO as well. So we really looked at the broad reach and took the time to really do a thorough deep dive into the community's needs, the community's wishes, and the community's aspirations relative to the Lower Boardman Ottaway, which is the 1.6 miles from Boardman Lake to the mouth of the bay. And I really took the time to look to touch base with the stakeholders and the community as well. We have the current site conditions. I know that we, we are used to seeing them, but it's important to look at not just seeing them, but what are the current conditions of the site that we're talking about, which the site is between Cass Street to, to Park Street. And that stretch is really the stretch that was identified within the Lower Boardman Plan that was the most transformational operation, transformational opportunity for the city, as well as looking at this, uh, this site here, it's really about cars that we're parking on this section of downtown, and really how can we place this instead of using cars for this, and be able to switch this to really looking at this as a pedestrian and people place for downtown. The needs and opportunities, really when we started the conceptual design, we looked at that as a base. The, the unified plan, plan, plan was the base plan. And then informed studio was hired to really develop the conceptual design. And that conceptual design, we went back out to the public to reinforce and to make sure that we heard through the unified plan what the <coughs> needs of the community would be and base that on that the people really wanted to turn and embrace the river. They wanted to really have a place to be able to access the river as well as access along the river. And the water quality always came up as first and foremost to really protect the lower boardmen with preference on nature-based sustainable so solutions and green infrastructure. So when you look at the conceptual designs, they did a great job of looking at what was the community's needs, what were the best practices, and how could this place become a place for people <coughs> instead of a place for cars for this generation and the next. So it's really looking into the future and not just right now, but what can we do to have this as a great place. And it took the conceptual designs. I identified that this is the moving downtown forward and the guiding principles. So it's designing a great place for all ages, for future generations, as well as providing the best um, water resource and looking at better technologies for, to protect the lower boardmen. And then the conceptual designs, we always had the city's strategies as well, as when you look at your goals and objectives, this is about connecting people with each other and nature. It's about climate accessibility and mobility, as well as your economic development strategy. From concept to action, 
it's really important that we don't just have a conceptual design. We've had several conceptual designs. We've never had a unified plan that was approved by both um, the DDA, the City Commission, the City Planning Commission, and Parks Commission. But how do we implement the plan instead of having just a plan? It's really about taking this plan and being able to implement that. Informed Studios really developed project segments, knowing that this is a big piece of the lower boardman, but how can we really look at this in segments to be able to get to implementation? So the segments that you have in your packet really divided from Union to Park Street into nine different segments. And when we talked to the city engineer, he's really looking at how can we implement sections of this. So uh, Tim's recommendation is that we look at one through four um, segments. And I'll t I identify <coughs> number one segment is parking lot B, which is on the corner of Cass and Grandview Parkway. Segment two is on the river on the south side, the riverfront. Segment three is the pedestrian bridge, and segment four is the alleyway and the J. Smith walkway. And the objective of focusing on these, it, these four segments instead of all nine segments is to really have the focus and having cost to have an implementable, oper, uh, uh, implementable project that we need to have a focus on one segment of this and be able to implement it, knowing that there's cost to be realized, but also understanding that there's also a mile of river that's left to be able to implement. So our city engineering is recommending that one through four <coughs> be the subject of the RFP that will be issued in May. The other key components that we really wanted to make sure that we're touching on the elements within the RFP that I will read to you as well. They were in the memo as well as um, the presentation that within the elements of the RFP that will be issued will be the requirement, the requirement to use sustainability principles and climate and energy resilience practices the requirement to demonstrate and measure savings and benefits associated with the sustainability principles and climate and energy resilience practices and improvement on environmental conditions, best practices associated with mobility and access, lighting, public facilities, ecology and habitat, the built mm -hmm. environment, placemaking activities and programming, and then best practices associated with stormwater management, waste management, and best practices to incur and encourage private investment, accommodating trash removal <coughs> and deliveries. So those are the elements that will be in the RFP, um, DDA staff and city planning and city engineer developed these based on your goals, your objectives, as well as when you look at the um, the conceptual design, how are we looking at, how we're getting the engineering and design and schematics. Are there other pieces within these, and I can stop here or move on, um, but we have two different <laughs> infrastructure projects that just wanted to get your touch base on these, the RFP elements. Do we have any question as it relates to this particular part of that, of what we're going to Okay, go ahead, Tim. So on the last slide there, what's meant by climate and energy resilience practices? It's really taking on um, how are we protecting the water? How are we putting better infrastructure in to be able to have that resilient um, when you're looking at the, the water measures as well? Um, and I'm sure that uh, the city engineer could answer it better or uh, but when I, when you look at the climate resiliency, that that's a very large piece. But it's a, a large piece of when you're talking about the lower boardman that's in, in important, as well as the ecology. Are there pieces, Tim, that I missed?
Would you repeat that in the mic, so Gene, so the public knows what the answer was? It's a, it's a, yeah, just repeat it. It's a very, can you say it or no? <laughs> I think I heard him say it's a broad description of a very complicated issue. Right, Tim? I have a question. Um, one of the slides in the conceptual designs shows hard sides on the river, which I thought we were trying to stay with a more natural um, riverbank. Uh, it's the one that shows this, the, uh, the tiered stairs and people sitting. So this, this would be this slide mm -hmm. that yeah. Um, yeah. It is uh, on where Travers Connect Chamber of Commerce sits. Uh -huh. And it's, it's a hard scape, but it's also has impervious surface components that is not there currently. Okay. But if you're going through your plan, that's not what's being looked at in this first phase. That would not be. Correct. It would um, be from CAS to Union. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. In the past few weeks, has any progress been made in regards to private investment? And I ask that because both in the uh, meetings I participated in with the lower Boardman leadership team, uh, it was made quite clear that uh, property owners uh, in the 100 200 blocks, nobody had stepped forward with uh, really any interest in doing redevelopment along the alley. Uh, it was made very clear that, yeah, maybe Kilwins might sell some more ice cream cones, but this wouldn't lead to redevelopment along the alley. And then in a DDA meeting roughly a month to six weeks ago, that was reiterated by one of the DDA board members that owns uh, property there that they, they don't, they have no intentions at this point of, of redeveloping or doing anything out their back door toward the water. And to me, that's why I supported this project in the beginning is because economic development in the 100, 200 blocks. And now when I see there is no economic development, I don't know what we're supporting. It's just a, it's a new park downtown. Uh, I would say that we do have interest in the, um, the lower boardman. That's one reason why uh, Mackinac Brewing, the new owner of Mackinac Brewing building, purchased is because of the vision that we have for the lower boardman and he's on the corner of front and cast street and i would also say that i don't want to underestimate the investment that has been put in by pangeas by bustinis and by kilwins that they are facing now the river instead of not having anything back there and sometimes we want something after the fact, but we also need to recognize the investments that have been made currently um, to look towards the river. But I can say that that Mackinac has indicated that the reason they purchased that and looking at reinvestment in the back of the building would be now the front of the building too. So. Uh, I have received that information from that property owner. Mm -hmm. And my, oh, go you ahead. Can go, you can finish up too. Uh, my other concern, uh, and this I expressed many times during the leadership team meetings, uh, as well as to previous city commissions, is the lack of science on this project. Um, and that's why I asked about climate and energy resilience of practices. And you talk about impervious pavement, et cetera. But there's no actual science as far as what will be better about water quality, what will be better about habitat uh, in the river. And so I, I just, I see this as greenwashing. Like, and I even brought it up during some of those leadership team meetings. Like what we're proposing and what's here before us now, it's what Disney would build as far as a river. Like, oh, from a distance, it looks like a river. But you get up close, as was just mentioned with hardscaping along the edge, we're not doing better by the river. Like fi it's fine to create a new park, but there's no science. This isn't about making the river and water quality and habitat better. I'm not asking for a reply, that's just my comment. Okay, I think, Tim, are you? Okay. Um, so one thing I was going to ask is, I looking at these conceptual designs, 
um, you know, talking about the, especially from the front street facing the river, I'm seeing no parking spots, which I really love to see. And, um, you know, I think sometimes we get the question of, sure, these are drawings, but approximate what kind of time, approximately what kind of timeline would be looking at where we could count on these parking spots being, and I don't need it down to like May of 2024 kind of thing, but like five, three to five years, five to 10 of when would we see those parking spots disappear? Because I, having been born and raised here, I'm very excited to not see parking spots there in the future. For the engineering and design for, from CAS to Union, for that section from section one, segments one through four, after we get the engineering and design, we are looking at how are we going to implement. We need the cost first and then being able to implement. So this is the timeline that we're looking at, Amy, is being able to, Commissioner Shamro, <laughs> is being able to look at the engineering and design, get the cost, <laughs> and then identify how are we going to pay for this and then be able to implement. The goal is to implement as soon as we can. Um, we have uh, most of the buy-in from the, the property owners that they support this, that parking is not the end all of all for their business. It's about people to be able to have access to. So this is a completely different um, look and opportunity for the downtown as well as the river. And I, I would say that the Lower Boardman Unified Team has really debated it as Commissioner Warner has identified, but how does this help the river? And part of that is really identifying that return and the, that benefit to the river. So part of that, what um, the engineer identified is that that environmental piece is very broad, but we wanna narrow it down because this is about the river. I am talking about the businesses, we're talking about economic development, we're talking about um, the people, but really it is about the river and how are we turning and embracing the river and for centuries and decades, decades and centuries, we've ignored the river, we've abused the river, but we are trying in this century and through this leadership to really look at the river differently and protecting and enhancing it and finally being able to protect it and really embrace it and turn towards the river and look at that differently instead of putting it through a canal. Any other questions? Um, I guess for the city engineer, like, well, you don't have to. We'll see whether maybe Penny <laughs> I can, can take the it. microphone if you need. Oh, um, that would be good. The question yeah. essentially is, we talk about it up here all the time. We hear about it from senior <laughs> staff that there's plenty to do. Like, <laughs> there are so many things going on and staff gets overburdened. So how, why should we, the city commission, make the DDA's project a top priority for the engineering department when there's higher priorities? Like, we have, the, li the list is at the end of our packet every week, what our priorities are. And the river project is not here. It's not one of those priorities. We could be work we meaning Tim and his staff could be working on all sorts of other things. Well, the Tim Lodge, city engineer, and the point of having an RFP and having consultant help is to address, you know, the workload and staffing issues, as well as our depth of expertise. Um, so I think that the uh, level of uh, public engagement that's occurred over the last few years uh, in regards to this, it this is ripe for moving forward with something more that would help identify what it is that we plan to do and how much is it gonna cost. Um, it just seems to follow the public engagement. Now we know more what the public has expectations are. This is a perfect opportunity and time to engage in, in looking at what it is that we wanna do to answer those questions as such as you raise about the science to how, how do we make this location more resilient. You know, right now we have a wall that was built in 1920. Um, that's, that was the start of the concern I had back when I first started here. Well, why, why have we not done anything with the river uh, corridor? Um, we have done some triaging with the wall in the 200 block, um, identifying that we really don't have a lot of additional mm -hmm. options in that. So we have the 100 block. I think it's a great opportunity to look into 
there's been a lot of public engagement. It would be really a shame just to ignore the public engagement and process without moving this forward. Um, you know, I've looked at what our capacity is, and you know, I'm, I'm very comfortable moving forward with an RFP, um, knowing how much time it takes to administer that, but knowing that we have support from DDA staff and other folks, you know, especially municipal utilities, and we're doing some things currently to try to prepare the site in advance of some of the other issues that we would have to deal with. So we've been focusing on this location. It's been uh, part of the community engagement, community involvement. I think you know now is the right time to, to move forward with what it is that we want to do here and mm -hmm. identify some costs and do we want to move forward with actually implementing um, those infrastructure projects. Rough idea of how much time it will take between now and when the RFP goes out? Um, the RFP is pretty pretty well centered and done. Um, so, and you know, it, it's just a few hours of time for me. Okay. Um, so, as we move forward uh, with it, we're already working uh, quite a bit in the 100 and 200 block already, um, and we are using consultants that will help us you know, through there. So, I don't know whose idea it was to chunk it, but I, I do think looking at one piece at a time is going to be helpful. It, it was um, the city engineer that um, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, encouraged us to focus, and uh, it was a fantastic idea. <laughs> I hate to give a compliment to Tim, but it was a good idea, Tim. <laughs> 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 He's wounded. We've got to be nice. I was going to say, poor <laughs> Tim's wounded, and you're taking a shot. For, for, for the conversation, it really came down to do you plan to implement all of this at once because is this you know if you look at nine projects implementing that all at once um, in the years of experience i've had it just doesn't seem practically implementable especially with the 200 block having projects that go outside of our boundaries mdot other things it just didn't seem likely that you would you know deliver a project with all of those components in a reasonable time frame um, and I think the expectation and excitement is there. So I think you know focusing in on this location is a great way to implement um, a portion of the 1.6 mile uh, uh, river plan. And knowing that there's other locations that we're working on, you know, to help improve water quality on the corridor. The timeline that we'd look at for the RFP is a release of the RFP in. Um, April or probably early May and then the review the proposal and select consultant would come back to the City Commission in June or July with the schematic design completed in December before you go to the next <coughs> next item any more questions as it relates to the lower boardman at this point from us and I'll open this for public comment on everything when we when we get toward the end of all that. So, okay, thanks. All right, thank you, Jean. The next is the West End parking structure, and this has um, a lot of history to it for the West End parking. It has been a, a long identified uh, project identified by the city and the DDA. It's tied to goals um, and plans about how we as a community will address land use and transportation downtown. By stacking cars in a city structure, we can repurpose and provide <coughs> for infill development on city-owned parking lots, and we can also remove parking on the lower Boardman Ottaway. The West End parking structure is considered one piece of the mobility uh, system downtown, a system that includes sidewalks, snow management, and street design to provide access to businesses. Oops, I'm sorry. Access to businesses. <coughs> and street design to provide access to businesses and commerce. This is all about um, many pieces of the equation and it really comes back down to best planning practices, as well as when you look at your city ordinance, we really wanted to have parking throughout the two, three parking decks to have a five to 10 minute walk for the, the mobility component. 
and really have not surface parking lots, but have the parking decks serve the area within the downtown. We didn't want private parking and just have private parking for that specific business and for that specific biz, uh, building. We wanted to have uh, streets that were active, sidewalks that were active, and be able to utilize the best practices. And the city, in their wisdom, identified that the best approach was having a public parking system and not requiring parking for those businesses. And that really relied on the best planning principles. And this I'll turn over to our city planner. Good evening, Sean Winter, city planning director. So as you can see right here, we've called out the two parking decks that we currently have. And the dark pink around shows what's approximately eighth mile walking distance from each deck, which is about two and a half minutes. The lighter shade of pink surrounding that is a quarter of a mile or what equates to about five minutes. And this is the distance most people are willing to walk without it feeling burdensome or cumbersome. But as you can see with the west end, we have a gap in that ability without the, uh, a parking structure. But the proposed parking structure provides a strategic location that allows us to efficiently store vehicles, um, which in turn is going to close that gap, creating better walkability um, throughout the downtown from centralized locations. So looking at the project history and needs some more, um, this is going to help the city's intended goal to transition the public surface lots into more um, valuable uses, um, such as potential re retail spaces, um, what it will do is it'll help create a more enticing environment downtown for walkability. If you've ever been on Union Street looking west down front or state, you've probably experienced the lack of activity. Nothing draws you down there, which is unfortunate because once you get west of the river, there really is a lot of activity there, but if you didn't know, it's not going to keep pulling you along. So by um, repurposing some of these surface lots, we have the ability to increase that walkability downtown, which in turn has a, a benefit for the economic of down, ec economy of downtown. Also, this also provides the opportunity to um, create more opportunities for housing, if that is the city's desire in these spaces. Um, and as Gene had mentioned, it does support the values expressed in the zoning ordinance. The city was very forward thinking back in the 1980s when it eliminated <coughs> its parking requirements downtown. This helped preserve a lot of the built environment. At that time, some downtowns were having buildings torn down just to meet parking requirements. But the trade off there is to um, look at opportunities such as decks, which are more efficient in storing those vehicles. So here we have the subject property that you're probably aware with. And again, it shows the high amount of surface parking lot that we have west of Union Street, which really creates that lack of activity or intrigue for the walkability component. And of course, land use is tied to mobility. And it's important, as Gene was alluding to as well, that we recognize mobility as a whole system. So it's the infrastructure for moving pedestrians, bicycles, uh, micromobility, transit, motor vehicles, is the maintenance of that system to make sure it's in a usable state, such as snow clearing. Um, and it's also uh, things like wayfinding, elements of benches, streetscaping, things to make it inviting and intriguing. Um, and again, this is intimately tied to land use because people need to want to go someplace or need to go someplace. And when you have nothing but surface lots, you're not drawing people to, to be mobile within the city. So then one more thing we wanted to talk about here when we look at this site it doesn't have to be just parking. We are intending to have the first floor along State Street to um, accommodate retail uses and keep that intrigue going that we're talking about. I want to commend the city engineer who um, took it upon himself to look at opportunities on that weird spur to the west as possible housing component. He's had conversations with Gore Cooper just to ask if it's possible to incorporate housing within the dimensions of that. Um, and within the height of the building and the dimensions of that spur, um, just real quick sketches, they did two of them for us. They could get about 24 dwelling units in there, um, with one being all one bedrooms of various size, and the second option being a mix of one bedroom and two bedrooms. So I want to make you aware of that is, you know, an option that could be incorporated into this deck. So just talking about the pace and timing considerations, again, um, having that deck in place will help with the transition of other surface lots downtown and better infill development. Um, while still trying to maintain that net zero loss of parking as we infill, infill those lots. Um, this is going to be very important, too, because we know a lot of our workers um, have to come from out of town. Well, not have to. Some of them choose to live out of town because they don't want to live in an urban environment. But we have heard from many of our employers that simply their employees can't find housing anywhere near here. So they are driving in. And we want our businesses to be successful and be fully staffed. And, of course, um, 
for visitors as well, uh, whether that's tourists or just customers in the area. We also know from many of our businesses that their market that they serve extends beyond just what is walkable to our area. So they do rely on people coming into downtown as we are kind of the regional commercial um, and cultural hub for the area. So again, we wanna make sure that this transition is smooth and that people are able to still access downtown. And we wanna acknowledge that this parking deck is part of the evolution of the city. The city has changed over time. The needs now are different than they are, were 30 years ago. That's why we think we're poised to, at a good point to implement this deck. But we also, through that same lens, wanna recognize that 30 years from now, the city is gonna be different than it is today. So going back to discussions in 2016, we wanna make sure that this is designed in such a way that if the need ever uh, declines, that this building can be repurposed for other uses besides just parking. Um, with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Gene just to quickly go over some of the um, elements that'll be in the RFP and the timeline and then open it back up for questions. <coughs> Within your packet and up on the screen, the elements that are in the RFP is the sustainability principles and climate and energy resilience practices. The requirement to demonstrate and measure savings and benefits associated with the sustainability principles and climate energy resilience practices. We're looking at snowmelt system, capacity for accessory needs such as the bike lockers, restrooms, etc. Remote parking management, meaning that this would look at similar to the old town parking structure is using that, that this would not be manned, this would be automatic that there won't be an office there to uh, man the gates. Public financing models for construction and management as well as the public-private um, partnerships and operating models will be part of this RFP as well. And design that will accommodate the ability to repurpose the structure in the future. Because of the site that we have, we're really looking at how could we in 30, 40, or 50 years if this changes that how can we repurpose the structure itself and maintain retail continuity on State Street, eliminating the need for curb cut on State Street by providing access off the alley. And then the opportunity to um, look at housing component within this footprint that we have. Those are the elements that we have looking at your goals and objectives on sustainability to have as part of the elements within the RFP. Okay. okay. Any questions? I have a parking question, and it might be that Ms. Van Ness is the person to answer this, but um, I read recently that the, um, the usage of the Old Town Deck is 21%, is, is that correct? It's, um, it is at 21%. Yeah. And that um, the Hardy parking deck is be having more use. But this isn't about a flash in time right now. This is about looking holistically at how are we eliminating the surface parking lots. So when you look at <coughs> when we have this parking deck, how are we eliminating at the same time or simultaneously to flip these surface lots into a usable space instead of four cars. So, and we're also looking at that this isn't, um, we don't, we have to be able to implement the vision for downtown that we know we can get better and we know that we should be better when it comes to land use, Linda, that it's not about forgetting what we have, it's about moving into the future. And another element that was um, identified to me is when you look at the percentage um, if we just gave up on beta, beta is not completely full, but we have to pr provide for the future and the future generations. This is about the future, not right now. And if we, when we build this one on state, uh, if we find that usage and Old Town continues to decline, that, that building was also built so that it could be repurposed. Is, isn't that true? Hi, Tim Lodge, sitting here. Um, the, the difference between a parking deck, um, which has a, a, a structural capac capacity of like 40 pounds per square foot versus a residential or other type of use, which is 100 pounds per square foot, is quite dramatic. So 
um, the the work at um, uh, the Old Town Deck was really about the surrounding properties and those opportunities for that. But as far as the parking deck itself, um, it was designed so that we maintained flat surfaces as much as possible, which is good. But as far as the repurposing it for um, for a, a, a use that would require those uh, uh, floor loads, there would have to be modifications structurally to the to the deck, and it's it's a challenge. Um, that all of parking decks have and it's a question that the parking deck consultants get asked quite often and I think the best answer to that is the design has to be able to have some flexibility so that additional structural elements can be added um, and it will be more compartmentalized so the span lengths instead of it being you know 40 to 60 feet they'll be shorter than that maybe half of that to be able to accommodate that so repurposing um, is really how do we keep the floors level as level as we can, um, and then that will give us the, the greatest opportunity. But it is quite a challenge for designers according to um, the few that I get to talk to uh, quite often is that it's a desire everybody wants to have, but in the end, it may be just planning for its obsolescence in that situation may be the best plan, but certainly going through the exercise of trying to figure it out is something that we would engage in the process. I guess uh, following up on that, in the, this proposed parking deck, uh, you can clearly point to uh, surface parking lots that could then be closed, and especially um, with, with the proposals that SOX has uh, floated, uh, opportunities to redevelop um, either existing or undeveloped parcels to create uh, more economic activity. Was there a similar plan to when the Old Town parking deck got built, uh, close other parking lots that have not yet been closed or to create additional economic activity in that area through redevelopment or other tactics that would create uh, more demand for parking in that area and could those plans still be realized and haven't yet? Um, I, so you're asking is, was there um, an opportunity when we built the Old Town Deck to close surface parking lines, but was that part of the plan? Yeah. Not that I, I remember, but that doesn't mean that it, it can't be, you can always change the plans. Um, and the economic development opportunity was related to uh, one, one um, business associated with it, with the identifier that you, we have to work to in include additional businesses within that area, which is being completed now. So we have three new businesses that was not there previously that are, is there now. So we're seeing more businesses come into the Old Town area. Did that answer your question, Commissioner Treadwell? It provides some clarity, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So I guess I'd just like to remind the public that our goal as a city commission about climate change is to address climate within all of our city priorities, goals, policies, and actions. Because we keep hearing about our goals about sustainability, but I'm not sure that it's truly understood climate mm -hmm. change and our goal is to be carbon neutral by mid-century. Uh, and I don't see how building a parking garage uh, helps achieve that goal. Um, two other comments. One, that to say part of the justification for this is that it was in the TIF 97 plan back in 97, which I'll remind everyone was last century, um, is poor justification because at the time as well, it was promised that TIF would end in 30 years. So we can't have it both ways either we're going to stick to everything that was said in 97, or we're going to acknowledge that that was a long time ago and we need to think about what's best today. Um, and then finally, I got to sit at a different DDA meeting recently, um, and I was actually very encouraged by the comments coming from the DDA commissioners uh, about this topic, uh, asking some really good questions that should have led to really good conversations but they didn't. Uh, they were shut down in various ways. Uh, somebody asked, these were DDA uh, commissioners, 
members of the board. Somebody asked about the future uh, of this project, uh, for, uh, specifically for future generations, and would uh, their names be cursed by future generations uh, because of climate change if they went ahead with this. Uh, somebody a else asked about the occupancy of the Old Town parking deck. Um, they asked twice, and they still never got an answer during the public meeting, um, which now we heard is 21%. Um, and then a third question, which I thought really hit the nail on the head, was if this gets built and there's more development all over downtown, how are we not as a community in the same position or even worse if worse means less parking? It's the equivalent to adding <coughs> you know, a third travel lane in each direction on the parkway. And plenty of studies have shown you can add more travel lanes and in a few years, you still have the same traffic you had before. So we can add more parking. And this was the gist of that question. We can add more parking and there'll be lots more development. And what, what's changed? What's different? We're still gonna be short on parking. The people that complain they can't park anywhere are still gonna complain they can't park anywhere. Um, and that should lead to a very good discussion and really leads to kind of my main point of all this because I used to be in favor of this parking garage, but there was never any budget that said, this is what we have to spend. These are our bounds on it uh, as engineers like to have <coughs> bounds on projects because it's other people's money. The sky's the limit. The project just keeps growing and growing. So right now we're on course to have a $50 million parking garage. I know the number bandied about is more like 35, but when you take into opportunity costs because of lost tax revenue, et cetera, uh, development opportunities downtown, which I'm all for, it's a $50 million parking garage. How much is enough, right? And how much is that per spot for parking? Um, at some point, I was talking with a neighbor the other day, he said the point of this is to get people downtown to buy stuff. For $50 million, can't we have some good discussions about how to get people downtown to buy stuff? Uh, because maybe 25, 30 million should be the budget. Maybe we have to set some bounds about how much we spend on something and not just say, oh, it's free money, let's just keep spending it. Maybe it turns out to be $60 million. Is that too much? And, you know, what if a property next door comes up for sale? Do we say, oh, great, we can make it even bigger? Like, where? It's just mind boggling that there's a lack of critical thinking and problem solving skills. Oh, I have, to, I, sorry, no, so I just raised my hand. Um, I, uh, I disagree that parking downtown uh, is <clears throat> just for people who are coming to shop downtown. I think when we change the rules on um, required parking, mm -hmm that these now become places where people who are living in the area can actually park their cars. Um, and so it becomes a collection of that. Fair enough. Um, and also for workers. So I, I think it'll be quite a small number. Those people who are coming to shop still want to park right in front. Uh, and this for me becomes a way for um, the developments that we've approved without parking. Mm -hmm. Those folks can have a place to put their car, which they will pay for. Yeah, it's not being given to them, they pay for it. Penny has her hand, so I'll yes. wait for her Can to I know. just make a comment? And that is that um, the RFP for this is supposed to um, put, I guess, the onus on the um, design or consultant to talk about um, uh, its impact on climate change and, and um, resiliency, that sort of thing. But it seems to me that if we can put, uh, say, three times the number of cars in a garage that is in a surface lot, and there's a snowmelt system in that garage, then we're reducing our impact of snow removal and snow melt by at least two thirds for that very same space. So things like that um, do make sense. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right, all right. Sorry, we were looking the other way, Richard. No. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm more with Linda on this because where I hear the difference in plans from 30 years ago is the plan 30 years ago was if you build it, they will come. 
to the Old Town parking deck. And what I'm hearing from this plan and have been hearing for the last six years plus is if we build it, we can take away. We can take it off the river. We can take it away and make less. And I would, I think we can move towards a future. I love to hear that we're looking at the obsolescence of the Old Town deck potentially. That's, that's cycles. That's how things work. Do we love that there's always these concrete structures? No, but that's just where we are as a society that is built. And repurposing something that's built seems like a much better idea than not, uh, than having parking lots on our waterfront and not engaging people in walking around downtown where they can and making, by doing so, making it more accessible to people of all mobility levels. Um, so I guess I would say I, I disagree with a little bit of that, um, that some of the been said. Um, the other uh, note I'd like to make, and it's not popular, but <laughs> we're not talking tollways, not yet at least. Um, that's me, I'm not putting that on anybody else. Is the same studies that have talked about adding lanes creates more traffic actually have some other side effects to them as well. And the most infamous one, and I wrote it down earlier and I forgot my notepad at home, of the two people who did the first study that's been referenced uh, all the time for that, said ultimately though, adding lanes of traffic doesn't, elim or not adding lanes of traffic doesn't eliminate the traffic. It pushes it out into, and this is the highway study, out into neighborhoods and the only thing that truly does eliminate it is cost. Right now we have a lot of parking meters on the waterfront that I know people who play games every day. I did it when I worked downtown for years and years and years. Hope you don't get that ticket, maybe you get it. We've had the petitions come to us to raise the limit on the boot so that they're not getting booted. But it's the, tra the fact of the matter is, is that cost at the end of the day is what drives people. And I can't believe I'm being more of a stick than a carrot person than Tim Warner right now, <laughs> but I am. And a deck and eliminating surface lots, the fewer, you know, meter lots that we have, or spots that we have, the let more we're discouraging, the more we're encouraging people to park out at Meyer somewhere and take the beta and even if they're gonna drive into town. But that's all, those are all steps that will come with this. Um, so I don't think that building a parking deck and taking parking off of our water is, is a bad thing in our community. Ideally, sure, I'd love to eliminate every single parking spot, but none of us are there yet. I shouldn't say none of us. Most of us are not there yet for various reasons. Um, so. That's just where I think we, some of those, some thoughts, I guess I wouldn't even say it's filling in facts. Those are just some thoughts. Yeah. No, I appreciate those comments uh, because a lot of the public doesn't understand that whatever the dollar figure is, say $50 million for this parking garage, that parking fees don't pay that back. We as taxpayers and the surrounding taxpayers, but <coughs> taxpayers pay that 50 million and then when somebody pays to park there, that's just to help clean it, maintain it, redo the stairwell, all those things. But the 50 million is gone. And so, yeah, I, I would be all in favor of rates that actually recover some of that at least. Like that could help sway me if we were talking about, great, over the next 10 years, we're going to gradually increase rates, especially for tourists, especially for people that commute out from the suburbs, whatever it might be. Uh, you know, give a break to people that live in the city. Um, but again, lack of like creative thinking and what's possible because that 50 million, you spend it, you might as well put it in a trash can and burn it. It's gone. Burn it, but I understand. <laughs> <laughs> that was Go ahead. So my concern is that we keep say we keep hearing this figure of $50 million. That is very different from what the DDA has proposed in the past. 50 million is a nice round number. That is what people are going to latch on to. I understand that costs are spiraling and inflation is real and we don't really know right now what the actual f dollar figure is based on what the RFP looks like. But I wanna be very clear that the 50 million is a number that you number. have come up yeah. with that sounds very um, much more easy to remember than 30 or 35 million. Uh, but that's a, that's a big difference between what we've been told so far and what, and I'm, I'll be very curious to see what the RFP shows us in terms of what mm -hmm. design um, and engineering says our actual costs may look like. But I wanna be very clear that that 50 million is what people are going to register and latch on to. Yes. We Maybe do. we can start an office pool with ice cream as well, <laughs> whoever <Love> wins. 
And I also want to, sometimes the, the financing aspect of it, because the DDA is the financing mechanism, the city owns this, but it's only within the district that the parking structure is located, pays for that parking structure. So no city resident that is outside of that district pays for that parking structure. So that's what the regional, this is a regional economic hub that we've identified. That's why this is important for the region to be able to utilize that piece. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because I've got, I've had the privilege of playing with these numbers for quite a few years. The last set of numbers that we've had is relates to construction, actual construction. It doesn't count the alley improvements. Well, I do have, or well, it does count the alley improvements if we have to make them. Is let's see here. The actual construction cost we have estimated is twenty-six million dollars. Still a large number by by any standards. So don't sneeze at it. But it was that was it. And then what we have to do in the alley could be another eight hundred eight hundred thousand dollars. So you're up to about twenty-seven thousand dollars. That does not count the land cost. Mm -hmm. And so let's just you know. <laughs> But we've never counted the land cost in the other two two decks that we had, mainly because the city already owned the property when we did that. And I don't, it was never on record what those costs were way back when. I think we did on the one, it was about 50000 But yeah, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, s and say, well, yeah, it's just 26. That's still a lot of money by, by any m means or not. So I just, but Thank those you. are nice EWAG guesses at this point and that's all it is until you get out there and start getting down into the nitty-gritty I don't know and part of that there is an opportunity that maybe the little wet edge on the side there could be used for something else besides parking or whatever I don't know but until you get to that point and you know exactly what you're talking about what you're going to do and we all know there's going to be other decisions that'll be have to made sometime next spring in the spring of 24 that'll have to have to be made and I'm sure and I've said it and I continue to say it, there will be probably a challenge to an art to an art uh, uh, to a um, to this and the public will have to have to make the end up case so this is where we are you're not gonna be able to do anything with TIF 97 anyway until the end of 28 you have debt service that has to be paid off so these are all factors that will have to be worked through and planned but until you get some real numbers and some real design, it's kind of hard to make a good, a good, healthy discussion. And looking at all these other issues, and I'm hoping as we go through the, the design proposal, there will be a lot of uh, people coming around the table to make sure the questions are trying, trying to be answered as it relates to the elements that are going to be in the RFP. So we'll take it from there. This is a bit of a tangent, but uh, playing off of what you said, I love the idea of city residents having a card, and when they put it into the machine, they get a different rate for parking. Than Tim and I, so I said it needs to be charged. Tim said oh, resident sorry, rate, though. Idea. <laughs> I love that idea. <laughs> if we do it for Hickory Hill ski passes, yeah. why yeah. not right. do it for parking? Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Got that? The technology could have worked. Yeah. Let's use it. And then the last one I have is the timeline, which follows the same timeline as the lower board Manotaway. Uh, release the RFP, um, review the proposals, and uh, for June or July, that'll come back to you, as well as the design engineering would be completed by the end of December. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, any other questions? Yes, go ahead. Just kind of one final sure. comment that ties both of these together. Because, yes, it's DDA, yes, it's TIF 97 or TIF whatever it's going to be called when it's extended. Um, but these are, they are tax dollars, and, and they're mm -hmm. dollars that they're allocated to the DDA, to the TIF 97 district, but general fund dollars would be returned to the city general fund were it not for this. So the two projects together are over $100 million. So at least $50 million could be spent on these projects or whatever, whatever other projects 
citizens in the city decided they wanted to spend on so there's opportunity cost um, yes these could be great projects but fifty million dollars to be spent across the city for other projects in the coming decade I think that needs a lot of public input Gene, did you want to answer that? I was going to ask something in return. But again. Because that is that is an opportunity cost loss for the general fund, but that's your the other $50 million is the only contribution we get from the whole surrounding area for being the center of the city. Right. Or, sorry, the but center you, of the region. But if you're not in favor of these two projects, it's not worth taking that money because then you, our $50 million as a city has to be allocated to it. If these projects were worthwhile, then yeah, it's a good argument. But at they what point, are worthwhile. in your opinion, but at some point, if we're spending the money to build something we all agreed on is not worthwhile, then it doesn't make sense. And then the public, I, I think the DDA has their work cut out for them to, to why it makes sense to spend city tax dollars on this versus city tax dollars on other projects in the city. Yeah. But I, I think you did say that the right um, opportunity is it's about the projects. So when you look at this is what I'm identifying here is about the projects that the community has weighed in on um, for a long period of time. And it's, it is the projects that we're focusing on and the financing, but we have to figure out the projects first. Okay. Tim, you had something? I just want to point out one of the main purpose of doing the RFP is to determine what the costs are. You know, to speak about costs in the abstract is which is going on in the discussion that I think is way, way premature. Um, we don't know the cost. Um, the last time that we engaged a consultant on the parking debt was 2018. I wrote the RFP to do that. We went through iterations on a different property. Um, we had costs associated with that and we've been carrying that process throughout. Um, we decided to make a clean slate, look at consultants to see if there was a scale of economy or a mm -hmm. different approach that instead of continuing on with the consultant that we have, so we have this RFP. Um, the main purpose is to get to a point to understand what the costs, what it mm -hmm. is in terms of the, you know, continuing on the conceptual designs um, that um, Inform Studios gave us. Um, I had lots of questions because I looked at one picture in one way and another picture a different way and I just had lots of questions about how do we get there. Um, I think that the you know the, the lower boardman's going to give us that, and I think the parking deck. Um, we have basically a new site. We have some opportunities that identified with some housing. Um, I'd really like to pursue that, and the intent of this is to get to a point, hire a consultant that really knows what they're doing, gives us costs, so we have can have that discussion about how do we pay for it, what is the value that's associated with it, what's the timing that's associated with it. Um, without these consultants, without these RFPs, we're not going to have that information. So. This is just a step to get the information that you will need to have to make a decision. I just want to thank the DDA for the aspirational uh, look at what could happen to our downtown. I think it's very exciting, so thank you. Okay. I'm going to open this up for public comment, you know, on either one or both of the projects if you would like, so. I'll state the rules for public comment. Please state your name and address. Indicate if you're a city resident, non-city resident, or city business owner. We've got a three-minute time allotment. When your time has elapsed, the timer will beep. And finally, we ask that all language be respectful to everyone. My name is Jim Crothers, and I'm a city resident at 218 West 11th Street. I want to commend Commissioner Warner for his revelation on this project and thank him for his comments. And I first wrote down, we have been here before. We're this is something we've started all over again. And thank you, Mr. Lodge, for saving 2018. And Mr. Lewis, your numbers were from five years ago. We did have a consultant on the parking deck who gave us three or four options. And we had um, those options were varied in price. And the high price was around 30 million, and the lower price was around in the 20s, as you, as you pointed out. We also talked about the idea of future um, use of the building and repurposing these buildings in the future at that time, but we decided it would be too cost prohibitive to do because as um, I think Mr. Lodge just pointed out, the square footage um, weight allowances is very expensive to do. So it's, it's, it's something we could have another consultant tell us, but it's going to raise the cost of the deck hugely. I think like someone said, planning for obsolescence is probably a better opportunity. I mean, we've already spent millions of dollars on this parking deck project. 
I don't know what the exact figures are, but um, most of it's gone to property owners downtown and all the shuffling. So we really are keep throwing money at a bad project, in my opinion. So um, it's very frustrating. And as far as TIF goes, um, and Ms. Renzi's memo, she points out that TIF is the only mechanism for regional cost sharing, and that comment was made. Well, if it truly was a regional cost sharing effort where the counties and the metro townships paid into it, that's agreeable. But when we're taking money from nonprofits and community-based organizations to f fund these efforts, that's not really regional communication. That's taking money from beta, taking money once from the library, taking money from the college, money that they need to run their operations to fund our needs. If regional governments actually funded TIF and, and, and helped us grow the urban core, that's a whole different story. So we can argue with that until we're blue in the face, but <laughs> I just don't agree with that, um, that we're taking money from our, our nonprofits. Um, it was mentioned that this was originally in the TIF plan of 97. Yes, it was in the TIF plan. It stated we might possibly build four parking decks, but they were never identified. And it went on to say in that TIF plan that we might not need to build these decks. It might not be something we have to do. The original vision of the TIF 97 plan, which I was on the original TIF advisory committee back in the 90s, that's how I got my start in all this, was the DDA's vision was to protect downtown small town character while allowing the greatest, greater building density and the tax base within the district to grow. We're doing that. The mission was to protect downtown small town character, enhance the pedestrian experience, making better use of the land, and maintaining historic building patterns. Within the making better use of land mission, it states the plan Excuse provides- Excuse me, Mr. Carruthers, your time for comment has elapsed. May I have a little more time, please? One minute. It states that up, we go up to four parking structures over the next 30 years. And after that 30 years, it's done. We should have done this in the past 30 years, and we didn't. But the whole idea was to give us 30 years to do this. Well, we didn't do our job, so our promise to the citizens was 30 years. And it goes on to say we may never see all of the development necessary for these parkings, parking decks needed, and therefore we may not ever need to, b to build them. So I'm just saying it's, as it was pointed out, we, we, we use the past plan for s our needs, but we also don't always use it for what it says. So um, this, this is a 30-year loan. It's not a forever thing. So um, the intent of the TIF plan was to give us 30 years to revitalize downtown, which we have done, and then give that taxable value back to the city for the general fund to maybe use for the rest of the city. So, and I'm gonna continue to tell you this and say this, and I have the documentation. Um, we've done what we said we were gonna do. We didn't get it done in time. That was so the additional minute. Let's Thank you, Jim. keep going, but at a better rate, at a different rate. Okay. Anyone else, please? Anyone else got comments they wanna make? <laughs> Pam Demerle, city resident, 135 East 9th Street. Um, I just wanna thank you all for such an amazing discussion tonight. I, um, as a DDA board member, I often find that it feels like we're kind of shouting into our own echo chamber and just hearing you guys help bring it together tonight is really encouraging. I am the mother of a six-year-old son and I am proud to be raising him here. Um, and one thing that I um, just keep kind of, there's a certain constituency in the city that is louder than maybe my um, demographic. And I just wanna kind of stand up here in support of these projects and just say I'm very excited about the direction the city is going with projects like this, revitalizing downtown. And um, I just genuinely wanna thank you all for your leadership and the DDA for their work on these projects. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Rick Korndorfer, 602 West 9th Street. Uh, I sat on the Boardman uh, River Committee for the last three years, and so I'm real enthusiastic about uh, what we're trying to do down there. Um, I have a building in the 100 block. Tim wanted to know how come nobody's coming up and doing development. Well, I'll be honest with you. I don't know of one property owner in that 100 block that's a developer. You know, that takes millions of dollars. That's not something you just do without <coughs> partners and uh, due diligence. Uh, the, 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 
the eighth street parking deck if you remember was built because of Haggerty's expansion and they did occupy that deck to the tune of probably 90 percent i mean it was filled up well COVID changed everything and they work from home now so you know evolution happens and things change i was on the original meeting when we went to the Twin Lakes back in the 90s when Brian Crow first got the uh, DDA job. And uh, we did come up with a plan back then to build four decks. We've got two done, but we did have four in the plan, and this is the third one on the west end, and the fourth one was, I think, behind the opera house. So it's it, you know it didn't come it didn't come in a vacuum it came from the city leaders that met and decided this is what we need. You know, things are expensive. I, you know, fifty million, twenty five million. I don't know what it's going to cost, but I do know this. I do know property owners downtown that have lost tenants because there's no parking. Well, the city's responsibility is to provide parking. So. You know, it's tit for tat. We, you know, we have to work together to make this all happen. You can't, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. So, I, you know, I, uh, I know Jimmy doesn't want to build anything. He's, you know, he wants to turn the clock back and, you know, have it a small town. Well, you know, what, what year are we going to turn it back to? 1952? You know, 1932? What, you know, what are you looking for, Jim? You know, Things change. Mr. Korndorfer, please direct your comments to the commission. Things change. You. And, and you, you know, do you want the bean pot back or do you want red ginger? You know, it, <laughs> you decide. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Myself and Ken Richmond created the historic district in the 1 in 200 block when we were on the historic district. It was a big success. Look at the fabulous job that... Thank you for your comments. Your time has elapsed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? <clears throat> Good evening. Brett Fetzel, uh, 10675 South Newman Road, Maple City. Thank you uh, for your deliberation tonight. Thank you for the work you've done. And the DDA as well. I um, helped with the lower boardman leadership team in developing this plan. And like Tim um, shared earlier, I had some questions. You know, I'm, an eco I'm a river ecologist, so where I work <laughs> is in much more pristine and intact environments, you know, especially in this river. And uh, tasked with this idea of restoring or bringing back function to the lower river is a challenge. It's going, it's flowing right through the middle of the town. There's been impacts to the, uh, the features of that river that just can't be turned back. But I, I resonate with your questions over, okay, what are we doing for the river by implementing these, these um, activities? And I looked back to the, uh, the unified plan and in the implementation, um, the action plan, chapter three, in the implementation uh, and management section, it says the CD and the DDA should develop a strategic plan to manage the development, monitor conditions and maintain the corridor. So this is where the key, this is the key to figuring out whether these dust management practices are employed, whether they have impact or not, positive or negative. They're proven practices, so it's the best that um, planners, engineers, resource professionals have at their disposal. But um, you have to monitor, you have to evaluate that through time. And some of these, some of these practices actually do take quite a bit of time to realize change. You know, it's not going to happen overnight or in a year or two. It may take decades for things to recover. So that's what I, I guess I'm pointing to is because uh, in the core value under that same section it says that uh, the recommended initiatives in the unified plan will account for the impact of those initiatives on residents, 
habitats, and the ecological status of the river. So I'm not sure whether a strategic plan addresses the monitoring and evaluation um, directly or completely, but uh, there is, that's the mechanism to evaluate that. So again, thank you for your work and uh, congrats. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other public comment? My name's Scott Hardy, and I live at 406 Northwest Silver Lake Road, no longer in town, but I'm oh. a downtown business owner. Um, we, we talk sort of in a schizophrenic nature about what we want to do downtown. We want to make sure there's affordable and workforce housing downtown, that we have downtown communities, we have apartment complexes going up near the forefront building. There may be over 100 residents there. And yet all of a sudden now we're talking about not wanting to necessarily support that effort by putting together a parking deck so those people have some place to park their cars and some place to be able to commute back and forth to work. Um, we can't have our cake and eat it too in this equation. We can't move cars off the water. We can't move cars off the river. We can't get rid of the oil that may emanate from those cars and go into the river and not find some place to replace those spaces for the people who need to drive to town. I would love to think in the next five years I'm going to be flying to town. I don't think that's going to happen, so my guess is I'm going to be driving from Silver Lake to Traverse City on a regular basis, and I'm going to need some place to park. And if I'm going to find staff to work with my company and for my company, they're going to need a place to park. I don't like parking particularly, but I would much rather stack it in one location and let you as a city, with your vision, develop some of the city-owned properties that are downtown right now. And if that happens to be end up with retail on the ground floor and residential living up above, so be it. We're building a community down there. The last thing I'll point out is that parking is going to happen in downtown, and right now the neighborhoods are starting to pay the price for that. The people at the forefront credit union building and the people who are moving into those vacant spaces and all of those residents, if there's no place to park, they'll find a way into the neighborhoods. So central neighborhood could pay for that. Old town neighborhood can pay for that. I'd rather stack them. I'd rather spread that cost amongst the other taxing jurisdictions so we have some regional um, input from them on a fiscal basis. And let's see if we can. We're going we're gonna to lose 200 and some odd parking spaces over time here as we start to develop all these city-owned lots. I've got to put those cars somewhere. And so I think right now this parking deck makes sense. It's responsible, and it's also following through on a challenge and a commitment we made to some of those businesses who decided to invest in downtown. Anyone else? Okay, thanks. All right. What? Beauty first. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, two comments. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, she said it. No, I said it. Two comments. One, I, I think there's space for four cars in front of my house. I live at 608 West 7th Street. Anybody's allowed to park there and walk downtown, I'd be happy to have you. Maybe we could have hot coffee on my front porch every so often uh, before you walk to work. Um, Careful. And then second, uh, to Brett's comments, and I appreciated those about the ecology of the river, but I'm afraid like a plan and, you know, yes, it's in there, refers to a plan, that, that's going to be lost. Like, we're humans, we like the, the big build something, whatever, but then maintaining it, doing better, like that, that'll be lost. And we heard DDA will help finance this, but then the city owns it. So really the city, we're going to devote resources to monitor the river, do better, it could happen, but it's unlikely. Like as part of what's being sent out in the RFP, maybe it's a separate RFP, we could spend less than a million dollars probably and over the next 18 to 24 months tear out all the invasive species along this, this stretch of the river, not just these two blocks, probably the 1.6 miles, and replant with native species. Does that solve it? No, but that's a huge step in the right direction and shows our commitment to the river and not just pouring in some concrete that's maybe not vertical, it's stepped and it's still concrete. Thanks. Okay, so um, 
one of the points that keeps coming up here, and I think it's important, and I'm not saying that this is the night we're answering it, we'll probably never answer it to everyone's satisfaction, but is funding, funding for everything. And it was said, you know, when we did this in 1997, we promised to be done in 30 years. Well, they also promised four parking decks. I can't be responsible for what people before me up here did or didn't do. But what I can also say is if we look in the context of 1997, if anybody <laughs> has lived in Michigan long enough, you might remember that a couple years before that, literally just a couple years before that, the sales tax was raised from 4% to 6%. I don't know if anybody else remembers that commotion. I was relatively young, but even I remember that. And it was promised then that 1% of that 2% increase was going to go to municipalities. As of right now, I think we can all check, and the sum that we've gotten from that is precisely zero. And since then as well, we've had other bills passed. Like in 2015, the bill that was called the Death Star Bill, um, it eliminated the ability for any municipality or any local to pass a tax that was more, or any kind of fee structure that was more restrictive than what the state allowed. So that was in response to um, local minimum wages and bags, charges, things like that. Now I know the state legislature right now is working on the bag tax or the bag fee, but they're not repealing that whole bill. So 30 years ago, we know what Mr. Crothers, who was part of the team and his insight is very valuable, but what everybody else was thinking was probably that there was gonna be some more revenue coming in. And what we've seen instead, no surprise, is less and less and less revenue coming into municipalities, especially small cities. So if we're not going to pay for things like this through TIF, if we're gonna to go to a general fund and have to start slicing up what portion of the general fund comes from downtown so we can at least maintain it, because I have to laugh that Mr. Korndorfer said, how far back do you wanna go? My mother, who was born and raised here as well, has said that to me numerous times because she remembers when you could roll a bowling ball down Front Street after like five o'clock in the evening and that there was a ton of parking lots and not a lot of investment in downtown. So I think as we're talking about what's good and what's not good for funding and what we do or do want, don't want to do downtown and in the whole city, we really have to be honest about funding. And that's just something I'm gonna put out there for all of our future discussions. I'm not debating any points tonight, um, but that's something that's gonna be in the back of my mind and a question I'll be asking on all these projects as they come forward. I completely agree with you. Uh, kudos for that comment. Uh, I also know that uh, when you're on the Planning Commission, all conversations end up being about parking. Uh, <laughs> and the majority of tonight has been about the parking deck instead of how exciting it is to think about activating the river downtown. So let's not forget about that part of the presentation uh, and uh, what a potential boon that's going to be for, for everybody. So thanks. Okay. All right. We're done with these discussions now. I opened it up for public comment based upon that. I'm now going to open it up for just general public comment because that's all. Anybody else got anything they want to say? Not already been said? Okay. I hereby call this meeting adjourned. I'd say about your beautiful. Do you want to have a third meeting today? Well, next week. All right. I saw my admin. Yeah. 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 At 4.30, oh, we had a meeting to hear the candidates for late. I think I'm going to bring it up. And I went up here.